hey, Chris, I'm not sure if this is going to help, but um, we'll try to give you the basics because it would take a while and it would probably best to be doing it live. Maybe come to Zoom uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights from 6 to 8. Might have been a better choice, but I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with you, how your family is. I'm not making accusations, just saying it might have been more effective, but we'll try it this way. Uh, because it's not like my videos are going to be significantly different than what you've seen. Um, so let's just investigate. If I had a function, oops, if I had a function, and let's say that it was a simple function like x squared. Okay, if you take the derivative, of course, it's this, right? I'm going to, I'm sorry, it's not that. It's this, right? Uh, because the, the way the derivative works, if you want to call them rules or something, you take the coefficient, and it becomes, I'm sorry, you take the exponent, it becomes the coefficient, and the uh, base of my power comes, comes down, nothing happens, and then I take 2 and subtract 1 from the exponent, so I get 2 to the x. That's how we deal with power functions, okay? And, of course, if I have a bunch of power functions strung together, 3x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5, I can treat each one of them as a separate power function and take their derivative. So the derivative of this, of course, is uh, 3 times 3 is 9x squared plus 14x, and minus 5 becomes 0. So here's my derivative of this particular function. So let's look at the antiderivative for a power function. Essentially, you're going backwards. So if I had a function like this, and I had a function uh, that was the previous one, and then I have the derivative, let's call this capital F of x, okay? And let's say this is the derivative. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the second derivative of that is just 2. Or you could say that this, the derivative of 2x, the der first derivative of 2x is equal to 2. Right? And if I went one further, one step up, the, tr the third derivative is this constant is zero. So it's really the first derivative of the one right above or below or whatever, it depends on what orientation we are. So um, yeah, I guess the way I think of it, I have it upside down to some extent. But So I have to figure out what would this have to be, what would this have to be for if I took the derivative to get this thing, okay? Well definitely would have to be this, but check it out. If I take the derivative of this, it becomes 3x squared. Well, the x squared parts matches up, but this 3, it kind of gets in the way, right? There's, there isn't, there's a 3 here, but there's not one there. So we have to compensate for that. So think of it this way. This has to be 1 third x cubed, so that when I take the derivative, this 3 becomes 3 over 3 x squared, and so this becomes 1 times x squared, which is x, x just is, is just x squared, which is that. So this, for this to be the previous function before I took the derivative and went th that direction, this has to be 1 third x cubed. I could take it a step further and, I don't know, call this um, f0 of x. I don't know, notation's all kinds of wrong at this point. But this would have to be some sort of x to the fourth, right? Because I would have to subtract 1 from this exponent to get it to be a 3. But it also has to be a one third when I'm done. So this this thing has to be one three one one third times four, or one twelfth x to the fourth. Why? If I take the derivative of this, I would take four, multiply it times the one twelfth, and get one third x, and then subtract one from that exponent to get three, which matches up with this. So I think of these as just being levels on an elevator, and you can go up and down, up and down, up and down. You just have to take the derivative or antiderivative. So if I had a function, let's say it's the derivative, and let's say it's 3x to the fifth, its antiderivative, or the original function, think about it as, I have to, if I take the derivative of this f of x and get the derivative, what would this have had to have started out as? Well, it would have to be x to the sixth, yes? But remember, I would have taken this sixth this 6 and drop it down as a coefficient. So 6 times what would give me this 3? Well, this would have had to start out as 1 half x to the 6th because if I use the derivative rules, 
I would have taken six and multiplied it and did that, which would give me this three X to the fifth, okay? Now, the rule that's written down on the white sheet looks like this, just for power functions. Um, X, it's one over N plus one plus one. Uh, if my function, if my function is x to the n, then my antiderivative must equal 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. And I suppose if you had a coefficient here, we'd call it a. And so if the example would be, if my, my original function was 13x to the 7th, then my my antiderivative going backwards to the higher exponent function would be x to the eighth, 13 over, that's an eight, um, eight. Why? Because if I take the derivative of this, it would be 13 over eight times eight, x to the eight minus one, which is just that. So think of it as I'm having to go backwards and compensating. So then on the worksheet, there are other uh, shortcuts or things that you may need to memorize or at least refer to when you're doing the homework um, is uh, other shortcuts and they're all in the uh, handout so take the note-taking guide for 4.1 and 4.2 and pluck them out uh, she also has them in the video but it might be faster or easier if you took them from from the notes and pulled them out and write, wrote, write them down on a single piece of paper and have them for reference, okay? Try, try that and let me know how it goes. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow evening.